Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, again, we come before you right now. Truly, we praise you for you are so gracious. Lord, only by your grace, only by your mercy that we can even be here. Thank you so much for just fixing all our schedules. Thank you for bringing us safely to this venue. Oh Lord, we pray as we open up this new series. We pray, oh Lord, that you would just guide us, that you would sustain us, oh Lord. And as we attend this morning's Men of the Word, we pray for all our families back at home. Keep them safe. And Lord, may we just continuously enjoy each other's fellowship as we receive your word. This we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's all be seated. Again, good morning. Really, what a privilege for us to gather this morning. And we praise and thank God for how He continuously sustains us and sustained us as we finish the different series that we cover for Men of the Word. By God's grace, tinapos na natin last series, 12 Ordinary Men. And I pray, we pray, that as we finish that series, uh, we really saw what God is teaching through these men of the Bible, that they were really just ordinary. Ordinary men doing extraordinary things for God. And again, for this morning, as we start on this series, uh, during our past meetings, uh, we've been discussing what are we to cover uh, for the next MOW. And daming series kasi na pwede i-cover. Many suggestions, many recommendations. And um, I think it was Pastor Dennis's um, suggestion that we cover this particular uh, series. I don't know if you've read this book, True Community by Jerry Bridges. The other day, I was telling my wife, ang ganda nung, ano, nung True Community ni ano, Jeff Bridges. So, gumagano yung wife ko. Tahimik lang siya, tahimik lang siya. Sabi niya ba, Jeff Bridges, kapatid ni Bo Bridges yun. <laughs> Ako nga pala, Jerry Bridges pala, Jerry Bridges. So, we're gonna cover this series. And it's a nice one. It's really nice. Um, if you don't have any time to read it, and I think we'll cover this for several weeks. Several weeks. And personally, as I was going through it, as I was studying the first chapter, so I go, ah, okay. Hala ko, alam ko na halos lahat. Yun pala, marami akong hindi alam. This morning, we'll cover the topic, the biblical practice of koinonia. The biblical practice of koinonia. You know what, men? If we closely observe our society today, if we closely observe, the word community, community, is used for a variety of reasons, for different purposes. In word na community. Sometimes, the word community would be used to describe groups of people who have something in common. Like, for example, when we say the farming community. To the younger generation, maybe to some here, they would say the online gaming community. The word community likewise is sometimes used when we talk about certain groups of people or certain race. We would say, for example, the Chinese community. The Indian community. Now, for the past years, if we would try to notice, many Christians, many Christian leaders and pastors have likewise started to emphasize the importance of the community of believers, the Christian community. And Christian leaders, pastors, do this all because of the tendency of Christians to be what? Individualistic. Christians have this certain characteristic that when it comes to living their Christian lives, they tend to live it independently. 
Di ba? Masyadong secretive ang many Christians. Sadly, Christians would try to isolate themselves from other Christians. Hence the reason as to why for the past decade, Christian leaders and pastors have very much emphasized the importance of the bonding of Christians in Christian communities. Now, now however, however, even though this trust, even though this effort of Christian leaders is so important, it does raise the question of what? Pinaka topic natin this morning. What is really a biblical community? What is really a biblical community? Yung common question natin palagi, pag meron tayong topic or theme na kinocover, na pinag-uusapan, is there a biblical basis for it? Is there a biblical basis for it? For using the word community in our Christian context. A biblical basis ba yan? Now, to answer that question, we need to explore the meaning of the Greek word koinonia. Koinonia. In the Bible, the word koinonia, we would find that the most common English translation is what? The word fellowship. Yun ang pinaka-common. Translation in the English ng koinonia, fellowship. Now, if we would closely study the word koinonia, Koinonia in its different grammatical forms is actually translated in several ways in the New Testament. Hindi lang fellowship. It would, if you would look at the word koinonia in the New Testament in the concordance, we would find that it can be translated in English as what? Participation, partnership, communion or sharing. And of course, the most common translation is the word fellowship. And you know what? Among Christian circles, the word fellowship has come to mean a little more than a simple Christian social activity. So Christian circles. In Christian groups and churches today, the word koinonia or fellowship would often mean the exchange of pleasantries. We often hear pagka sinabi nating fellowship, the exchange of pleasantries. The word fellowship would have a meaning of social activities over food and coffee in the church and outside the church. I remember uh, just a few months ago, our group, yung Bible stu- group study namin, no? the men, nagkaroon ng fellowship. Men, tapos women. Okay. Siyempre, the uh, biblical people that we are, no, po kami. O kami sa isang cafe dyan sa, dyan sa mall, no? Kwentuhan kami. Kwentuhan kami. Fellowship eh. Coffee fellowship. Coffee fellowship. We talked about sports. We talked about movies. We talked about everything, no? So tapos na namin, nag-rejoin kami with the wives, no? Tinanong ako ng wife ko, sa anong pinag-usapan yung topic sa Bible? <laughs> Our group kasi is a very serious group pag Bible study. Um, very serious. So sabi ko, Shaks, uh, dito sa fellowship namin na ito, kasi I think, nangyayari lang yung fellowship namin na yun, at least, tama ba, Jace? Ma? Once a year, no? The most, yung ganon. Outside yung regular Bible studies. At tinanong ko nung wife, kasi sa kanila pagdating na, as in serious sila eh. Serious? Wow, talagang, parang structured, organized, oh. Eh, sabi, wala talaga eh, wala. But anyway, you know what, brothers, interestingly, when we study the Bible, yung sinasabing fellowships kayo ng Christian is not the meaning of fellowship in the New Testament. Yung fellowship na madalas na nakikita natin among Christian circles is not the meaning of fellowship in the New Testament. And nasyak ako dito. Buti na lang no pinag ko. nag na rin ako. Okay, now, when we study scripture, the first occurrence of the word fellowship in the New Testament occurs in Luke's account. In the beginning of the New Testament church in the book of Acts. And when was this account? This happened during the day of what? The day of Pentecost. Which is actually a result after Peter's sermon. We're in about, mga, I think, 3,000 people believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. 
In Acts 2, verse 41 up to 42, it writes, Susunod bro. So then, those who had received his word were baptized. In that day, there were added about 3,000 souls. They were continually devoting selves, themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Actually, ito yung basis ng PDF 242. If I'm not mistaken, it was Brother Peter who suggested how do we call PDF. PDF 242. Ito yung passage na yun. Acts 2 verse 42. Now, listen to this closely. Based from the book of Acts, we shouldn't be surprised that these new believers devoted themselves. Okay? We shouldn't be surprised that these new believers devoted themselves to what? The apostles' teaching and to prayer. Okay? For sure, maintindi natin yun. Na dinevote ng believers yung sarili nila to the apostles' teaching and to prayer. But why was it that it was also mentioned that they devoted themselves to what? Fellowship. Why? Di ba? Okay, normal na they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to prayer and even to the breaking of bread. But why fellowship? Why was it? Why was it that it was also mentioned that they devoted themselves to fellowship? If we really think about it, it would seem strange to include fellowship along with teaching and prayer if fellowship meant no more than a simple Christian social activity. Di ba? Kung yun lang ang ibig sabihin nun. Go for a moment to 1 John chapter 1, verse 3. It is written in the NAS, What we have seen and heard, we proclaim to you also, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. In yung NAS. If you have an NAB, the New English Bible translation, what we have seen and heard we declare to you so that you and we together may share in a common life that life which we share with the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. And we write this in order that the joy of us all may be complete. Yun yung NEB version. If we would happen to have the NEB version, interestingly, we would notice that in both Acts 2.42, and 1 John 1 verse 3, the New English Bible translates koinonia as sharing a common life. Yun ang translation on. And you know what? This is actually the most basic meaning of koinonia. Or what it is commonly translated in English as fellowship. Koinonia or fellowship. Koinonia or fellowship is actually the sharing of a common life with other believers. A life that the Apostle John says, what? We share with God the Father and God the Son. That is why, that is why koinonia, when used in this translation, would convey the meaning of sharing a common life. And since we share a common life, we can only share a common life if there exists among us, what? A relationship. A relationship. Men, brethren, we can only share a common life. All because we also have that relationship. A relationship with God the Father, the Son, and with other Christians. And this is the biblical meaning of fellowship. Fellowship is the sharing of a common life because of our relationship not just a simple activity. Look, there's nothing wrong to fellowship, have coffee and food. Pero hindi yon ang basic primary meaning ng Christian fellowships. Okay, we'll go more into that in a little while. If we really think about it, if we try to assess, di ba? Once we have fellowship with other Christians, no? Una kang titingnan natin, are we fellowshipping really with Christians? Are we fellowshipping with Christians? Kasi makikita natin yung characteristic ng fellowship natin, kung totoong it's a biblical Christian fellowship, 
Kung ang content ng fellowship natin is centered on what? God and His Word. Kaya nga, so important, when we again have our fellowships, the pleasantries, walang problema yan. That's okay. Pero mga add-ons na lang yan. Add-ons na lang yan. Now, men, just to emphasize, those first Christians of Acts 2, Okay, were not devoting themselves to social activities. Okay, they were not. They were devoting themselves to fellowship, the sharing of their common lives, all because of their common relationship to each other. A relationship that consisted of sharing together the very life of God through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. They clearly understood that they had entered this relationship by faith, in Christ alone, not by joining an organization, not by joining a movement. No. It is only by faith in Jesus Christ. And they realized that their fellowship with God logically brought them into fellowship with one another. Through their union with the Lord Jesus Christ, they were formed into a spiritually organic community. Ito yung nakalagay sa 1 Peter. Living stones being built into a spiritual house. That's in 1 Peter 2, verse 5. Fellow members of the body of Christ. Sabi nga ni William Hendrickson, Koinonia then is basically a community relationship. Biblical fellowship is not just primarily an activity. It is a relationship. It is the spiritually organic, natural relationship that forms the basis of true Christian community. It is not the fact that we are united in common goals or purposes that makes us a community. No. Rather, it is the fact that we share a common life in Christ that makes up a true biblical Christian community. Men, there are so many organizations, both secular and Christian groups, whose members work together to pursue common goals. Some of these groups may call themselves communities, but biblical community goes much deeper than sharing common goals. Though, it really ultimately involves that, and we'll see that more in a while. Biblical community is first of all sharing of a common life in Christ, it is when we grasp this truth that we are in a position to begin to understand the words of a true biblical community. That is why we cannot join, we cannot fellowship with other Christians who do not truly believe that Christ is their only Savior. Theologically and what? Practically. Gets natin yan? There are those Christians who would declare, oh yes, Christ is their personal Lord and Savior. Theologically. Pero practically, it does not show. More so, we cannot fellowship with other groups, calling them as Christians, pero hindi si Christ lang yung Lord and Savior nila. There was this big activity that just happened for the youth no, so big. I don't know how it was it called. Laking concert. Tingnan ko lang. I saw this in social media. Dami. Wow. They were really singing, praising, worshiping God. And then nag-share na ito, Christian youth. Ah. Christian youth. Uh, daughter of a pastor friend of mine. So I was going through the video. No? Sabi ko, galing, galing. No? Tinitingnan ko yung content. Tapos mami, as I see the pictures, Wow. Bigla nagulat ako. Teka. Isa nagtotok pare. Tapos isang picture, hawak nila, Rosario. Kanina umaga ko lang sinascroll to. So sabi ko, wow. And itong uh, youth na ito, daughter of a pastor. And siya mismo nag-share. And yung pinaka-sharing niya dun sa ano, wow, parang she's so amazed. She's parang in tears. Sabi ko, this is so dangerous. This is so dangerous. 
Di ba? Men, hindi ito ang biblical koinonia. We can have biblical fellowship kung meron tayong totoong relationship. Kaya hindi pwede biblically yung what? Ecumenism. No, hindi pwede yun. Hindi yun ang biblical fellowship. We cannot devote ourselves to that. Again, we remember always the doctrine of grace. We do not judge them and condemn them. No. Pero we cannot, what, fellowship with them yung kung paano sinasabi ng Bible. Okay? Now, after learning that koinonia, fellowship is the sharing of a common life, Because of our relationship, go for a moment to Luke 5, verse 10. For amazement has seized him and all his companions because of the catch of fish which they had taken. So also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, do not fear. From now on, you will be catching men. From this Luke passage, we will now also see that koinonia also means sharing together in the sense of a partnership. Yung word na partner dyan. That's also a form of koinonia. Again, when we closely study scripture, both classical Greek writers and New Testament writers use the word koinonia to refer to a partnership. To refer to a partnership. In the secular, like a business partnership. The famous Greek philosopher Plato spoke of the dissolution of what? A koinonia. Ginamiti Plato yon to describe a business partnership. Again, like what we just saw in Luke 5.10. Luke used a form of koinonia to refer to as partnership. Luke wrote the partnership of Peter with James and John in the fishing business. And not just that, notice also what the Apostle Paul said in Philemon 1 verse 17, If then you regard me a partner, accept him as you would me. From this passage, we also see the Apostle Paul likewise using the word koinonia as the word partner. Partner when he described himself, as partner in the spiritual realm with his friend Philemon. And not just that, the Apostle Paul likewise used the word koinonia as partner in Philippians 1, verse 3 up to 5. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. From this passage, we see the Apostle Paul thanking God for the Philippian believers' partnership in the gospel. Brethren, the concept of fellowship as a spiritual partnership is likewise firmly embedded in the New Testament use of koinonia. Okay? Kanina yung word na koinonia, pinag-usapan natin yung relationship natin. Ito pa yung isa. Partnership. If kanina fellowship, the sharing of a common life, a relationship describes a believers, believers as a community, koinonia now is used to describe them as partners very much like in a business partnership. Business partners in a community, what? Working together. Kung yung kanina, community relationship. Ito ngayon, a community in action. Going now beyond our relationship. Not only would Christians have a relationship, but also a partnership. Men, in the secular world, a business partnership is always formed. Okay? For the entrepreneurs here, the businessmen, a business partnership is always formed in order to attain an objective. And one of the main objectives of that partnership is what? To gain a profit for the partners which is the business secular objective. Now, very much like the objective in a secular business partnership of gaining a profit, in the same way, the concept of a spiritual partnership implies that it is created with the objective of what? Not gaining a profit, but to honor 
and to glorify God. Just as all believers are united together in a community because of their relationship, so are we all united together in partnership form to glorify God. God is glorified when Christians grow in Christ-likeness and when unbelievers are brought into His kingdom. That is why, that is why, Biblical community then incorporates this idea of an active partnership in the promotion of the gospel and the building up of believers. Clear ba sa atin ito? Kaya malinaw sa scripture that we cannot be an equally yoke with unbelievers. Theologically and practically. When I say always theologically, Pwede kasing malinaw sa utak, sasabihin ng iba, o oh, ito, Christ Lord and Savior. Pero practically, hindi ganon. Mag-ingat tayo. Because ang true koinonia, a true Christian community, especially in the setting of the church, in ministries, hindi po pwede na magkaroon o magkamix yan ng unbeliever. Malinaw po yun. Sadly, we see so many evangelical groups today bringing into ministry, into the community, an unbeliever. And the reason they say that, all because, sinasabi nila, eh, total pag nandiyan na, sushera naman ng gospel. Pero that is so fatal. That is so dangerous to the Christian community and likewise to that person you involved in. Okay? So, kanina, relationship, tapos partnership. Ang tanong natin nga, for us, when we see our Christian fellowships, those who we relate with, no? how are we in this angle? Are we really moving toward that common goal? Ano ba yung goal? To glorify God, to honor God, and to reach out to the lost. Yun ba yung laman ng mga koinonia natin. Actually, this is a very good example of a koinonia. Di ba? This is it. This is so nice. Uh, continuously, when we see you guys here uh, every other Saturday. So women din ganon. When the women see each other every other Saturday. Yung Sunday kasi iba pa yan. Ito nga, ito, ano pa to eh? It's... Um, Sana makakita tayo na in the future na hindi lang taga GFC dito. Alam niyo ba yon what we do in GFC? Sa pulpit kasi, pag Sunday, um, ang ano dyan, for GFC members, be exposed to honor God, to glorify God through the exposition of the Word. Di ba? Ang hirap kasi mag-invite una ng mga Christians to attend our Sunday worship. Ang hirap nun tumawid eh. Christians to, ha? Christian yung context. Ha? Ang hirap. Kasi siyempre, they might be comfortable in their churches. no? Not that we're saying those churches are not faithful. We don't know, di ba? Pero we try to invite them. Ay, ayaw naman. Hence, itong mga iba-ibang ministries natin. Ito ibang ministry. We have so many ministries. Ha? We have the crossroads for the youth and young adults. We have the crosswalk, which will happen tonight. Shameless plug. Brother Peter will be teaching. Yeah. Um, meron tayong Men of the Word. Meron tayong Women of Grace. Meron tayong PDF. Bakit ang daming yung ministries na yan? Those ministries is an opportunity for us to invite Christians para magka-taste sila ng exposition. We don't want them to join GFC, pero at least they would be aware what exposition is if they are not aware. Okay? Yun ang second reason, but may mga ministries. And the third reason is what? To invite non-Christians. Ang hirap na nga mag-invite sa Sunday na non-Christian, ito at least, at least tinatawag namin, green zone. Yeah, there's food, there's fellowship, but ang pinaka-important, yung partnership natin, there is the very Word of God. Hence the reason we always pray for all of us to invite other Christians and non-Christians. Okay? Yun ang pinaka-reason natin. Now, kung tumawid yung Christian, 
Pumunta sa Sunday Fellowship, praise God. Okay? Na kung yung non-Christian pumunta rito, dito muna, ma-feed ng word, we pray, na in the future, that person becomes saved and will join into the main fellowship of the body of believers, yung koinonia ng GFC. Now, after seeing and learning the truth about koinonia as a relationship, as a partnership, here's another meaning of the New Testament koinonia. They were devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking of bread in prayer. As we have already seen, the NEB, the New English Bible says in Acts 2.42, they met constantly to hear the apostles teach and to share the common life. So what was happening in the very first community of Christian believers? What was happening? What was happening was that as they devoted themselves, ano yung una? To the apostles' teachings, as they listened to the apostles' teachings, they were what? By God's grace, enlightened by the Holy Spirit. And as they began to see scriptures in a new way, if I'm not mistaken, kung hindi ako nagkakamali, those mentioned here in Acts 2 were all Jews. Okay? Most likely, all Jews. Jews who were very much aware of what? The Old Testament. So as they devoted themselves, they were daily gaining a new understanding of God's Word. And as they individually learned from the apostles' teaching, what happened in the NEB and in other versions, they shared with one another what they were learning. This is fellowship. Sharing with one another what God is teaching through scriptures. And this is an important part of a true biblical Christian community and fellowship. From this passage, we now also see koinonia would also have a meaning of communing or sharing with others what we have. Although we usually use the word communion as a term for the Lord's Supper, it is used here also to mean communing intimately or sharing with one another on a close personal and spiritual level. It may be the mutual sharing among believers of what God has taught them. Through scriptures. In the context before, through the apostles' teaching. Yun ang koinonia. It may be a word of encouragement from one believer to another. The key element is that the subject matter is focused on God. As well as on His word and His works. Sabi nga ni J.I. Packer, it is first a sharing with our fellow believers the things that God has made known to us about Himself in hope that we may thus help them to know Him better and so enrich their fellowship with Him. If you look at Acts 2 verse 5, the first believers who were gathered into the church on the day of Pentecost came from what? Nakalagay sa Acts 2 5, every nation under heaven. Prior to their salvation, prior to their conversion, they would not have related to one another like how described, they described it in Acts 2.42. Diba? Nakalagay doon, from every nation under heaven. Prior to their salvation, for sure, they would not have related to one another like how they were described in 2.42. But immediately after coming into the community of relationship, of the body of Christ, they began to what? Experience koinonia. Koinonia. May I ask, in connection to what we just learned, how do you think is our present day concept of fellowship be similar or maybe somehow different from the biblical description or definition of fellowship? How similar Oh, how different is it kaya? Take those times of coffee fellowship. Wherein we discuss everything except scriptures. Yeah. Sorry, ah. once lang nangyari sa amin. Once. Oh, hindi na mauulit yun. Dalawa ko lang. Okay? How do you think? Is it, uh, would it be close to the biblical koinonia as how the Bible describes it? 
Di ba? Yung fellowships today, nothing wrong that we talk about other stuff like job, uh, sports, no, or even weather. Pero dapat nun, ang central point nun is, how is God using that? What is God doing in those content that we discuss? Now, if we are to regain the New Testament concept of fellowship within the community, we must learn to get beyond those temporal issues of the day and really begin to share with each other on a level that will enhance our spiritual relationships with one another and with God. Kung yung mga first Christians noon na nangyari sa Acts 2, 42, di ba? hindi nga sila magkakakilala. Eh. And yet, nakalagay doon, they devoted themselves to fellowship after the apostles' teaching. Malino eh. Ito, when we fellowship, di ba? It's so nice. Sa sobrang iksi ng time natin, and I'm running out of time, no? Sobrang iksi ng time natin sa PDF 242, we overextend our discussions. And ang pinag-uusapan natin by God's grace, what? Always what is connected to God's Word. That's so nice. Gustong-gusto ko yung nangyari dito. And even, uh, as I hear my wife may kwento about yun sa Women of Grace, sila mas mahaba yung ano nila eh. Pagka, I think, start nila doon, uh, Nine. Mag to 12 na, hindi pa sila tapos eh. To 12 na, hindi pa sila tapos. And nag overextend pa yan. Meron pa silang ibang fellowship relating. And maganda nun, it's always connected to God's Word. Shameless plug. Next week, uh, tapos na yung Extraordinary Women. Ang pinaka-topic nila is Proverbs 31. Proverbs, sobrang nice tong study na yun. Uh, if you have friends, the single women, let them attend. More so, yung wives, let them attend. So nice of a study. Mismo yung wife ko, as she was studying this, grabe to, no? Sige, pag-aralan mo pa, pag-aralan mo din all. Hindi <laughs> talaga, ang ganun. She was sharing all her thoughts, sabi na ganun. Grabe, hindi pala ako ganito, hindi ganito. Okay, so viber siya sa women group namin. Uy, ha, attend sana kayo. So viber. Tahimik yung mga women, walang nagsasalita ako. Uh, anyway, follow up ako, attend kayo. Shameless plug. Pag-pray nyo na ma schedule, next Saturday, uh, be there by 9. No? Be there by 9. And bukod sa ano, since last na yon ng Extraordinary Women, Proverbs 31, i-cover nila. May iba pang activities. And I think they will cover the next study, spiritual disciplines. Spiritual disciplines. Next, next, next week. Okay. So, as we examine the account of these early believers' attitudes, no, we would also see that they did not limit their concept of koinonia to sharing with one another only spiritual things. They didn't just share spiritual things. Look at also Acts 2, verse 44 up to 45. And all those who had privily, and all those who had believed were together, and all had all things in common, and they began selling their property and possessions, and were sharing them with all as anyone might have needed. So hindi lang spiritual things sing shinere nila. They also shared what? Material possessions with those in need. Men, when we again closely study scripture we would learn that besides the English word fellowship, one of the most common usage of the word koinonia in the New Testament is in the sense of sharing material resources with others. For example, the Apostle Paul urges us to share with God's people who are in need. And you would find that in Romans 12.13. In 2 Corinthians 9 verse 13, he speaks of your generosity in sharing with others. The writer of Hebrews urges us not to forget to do good and to share with others. That's in Hebrews 13 verse 6. The word share in these passages is a translation of the basic root word koinonia in its noun or verb form. Men, a willingness to share our possessions with one another is a very important aspect of true biblical community. 
sharing our possessions with others should be a natural consequence of our realization that biblical fellowship denotes both a relationship and a partnership. Paul said that all parts of the body should have concern for one another. And you know what? We will only be concerned for the needs of others in the body only to the extent that we see community, the biblical community, as primarily a mutual relationship in Christ among members of the same spiritual body. Intindihan natin yun. Makikita natin ang importance ng truth na ito if we really understand what a true biblical community is. The fellowship of sharing with those in need is more than just showing compassion or even benevolence to them. More than that, even unbelievers do that. The fellowship of sharing possessions within the body is a tangible recognition that we are in a community relationship with one another. And that when one member of the community suffers, we all suffer together. Here's a practical example of this. When a parent meets a need of one of his children, when we do that, we do not think of that act as an expression of benevolence, but as an expression of what? Our relationship. Nakuha natin yun. To those who have children already, di ba pag nakita natin yung kids natin or kid natin na may need, we help our child not because of benevolence. No. We do that because of our relationship. And ganun din ang biblical koinonia. Fellowship with each other. It is both his privilege and his duty to meet the need. Yun ang important na maintindihan natin. In the same manner, believers have both a privilege and a duty to share with each other as fellow members of the same body. Similarly, in a partnership, the partners share in both the income and the expenses, both the assets and the liabilities of the partnership. No one ever establishes a business partnership where one partner takes all the income and another one pays all the bills. They share alike in both the positive and the negative. And it should, should be the same way in the community of the church because we are all partners in the gospel. We need to share with one another, realizing that we are not owners but only stewards of possession. God has entrusted us. We see the application of this principle of partnership. Look at 2 Corinthians 8, verse 13 up to 14. Our desire is not that others might be relieved while you are hard-pressed, but, but there might be equality. At the present time, your plenty will supply what they need, so that in turn, their plenty will supply what you need. From this passage, Paul envisioned a continual flow of believers' possessions towards those who have needs. This is an outworking of biblical fellowship, koinonia, an important expression of a true Christian community. Paul was urging the Corinthian believers to have fellowship, notice this, with Christians they have never even met and never even would they meet the poor among the believers in Jerusalem. They were not going to have coffee and donuts together in those times, no. But they were fellowshipping with those believers in Jerusalem by their sharing of their own. They were really literally going to dig down, dig down into their own pockets to help the needs of those believers. Now, we can see then that the concepts of community and fellowship are closely linked together. We cannot have true community unless we practice true fellowship. In fact, the concepts of biblical community and biblical fellowship are so closely tied together that we may sometimes use the words community and fellowship interchangeably. All because what the community does in terms of fellowship determines the character and face of that community. 
Kung ano ginagawa at laman ng fellowship, yan yung character ng community na yan. That is why men, in this opening lesson, we have seen that koinonia is used in the New Testament to express four different but related dimensions of fellowship. Community relationship, community partnership, communion, the sharing of truth, and sharing material possessions. That is why in our breakout groups later, yung pinaka-breakout question natin, how does the New Testament koinonia differ from the way it is often represented today? And how do you think can this be helpful to us? Okay? Siguro, let's close in prayer. Father God, again, we come before you. Truly, we praise you for your word. Thank you for revealing to us the truths that we learned of what true koinonia is. Oh Lord, we pray. And as we fellowship, as we live the biblical truth of koinonia, we know that on our own we cannot even do this. But we plead and we beg for your grace, for your mercy, to please help us do this. Again, may we truly honor and glorify you as we enjoy each other's fellowship. And Lord, may all our discussions be focused only on you. This we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.